just want to consult God in prayer. So let us stop talking and talk to God. Let me indulge your uh, cooperation. Thank you. <clears throat> Bow our heads for prayer. O oh Lord, our God, O oh, Thou who hearest every heartfelt prayer, uh, we, Your children, continue to gather in Your presence. Lord, we are mindful that only You can speak to our hearts as You please. Even as I am speaking audibly, Lord, may I myself be mindful of that still small voice, the way in which all of us in these end times should go and be a prepared people. For your soon return in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Education and religious liberty. Today we are looking at what is called statutory law in English schools. The law that is already been planted in the schools in which your children are attending. You may not even be aware. It poses a challenge which the immediate response is to be upset. But this week, may I pray to God that I don't come over that way. Let whatever we discuss here be an opportunity to stand up for God. Our mandate we continue, Jesus speaking to his disciples, then he's talking to all his followers today. This premise has not changed. The great I am, I'm sending you to the wolves. You are too comfortable with fellowship in that congregation in your church. It's time you face the wolf. Why? Because Jesus faced wolves. When you get there, I will take over, but I want you to be wise and harmless. The servant of the Lord, whom you and I have great confidence, says, the members of the church including you and me, I am very mindful to be saying leaders, pastors, elders, members, I included the members of the church, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, will individually be tested and proved. They will be placed in circumstances where they will be forced to bear witness for the truth. God is going to make sure you face a wolf to test you where you stand. With fellowship, there's nothing to go by. Because you will all be bleating. I want something before you which is going to howl and see what you are made of. Men, it says here, will be called to speak before what? Councils, courts of justice, not in groups, not pastor representing me, not an elder. It says perhaps separately alone when we have run as groups let us remember 
because we are born one by one. Even twins are pulled out one by one. Sometimes there is a tendency we think we're born in swarms like bees. So we just follow each other. Could it be time has come, it may sound selfish, everyone for himself. Just like you and I breathe one by one, we eat one by one, we will die one by one. So members will be forced, look at that, to face the wolf and you'll be sent there by Jesus himself. Not to be harmed, but to witness for him. I would like to say our children in our schools are facing already that challenge. They cannot by themselves possibly make sense of what's going on. But you as parents, you as pastors, you as members have that opportunity to stand up for them, our children. Why I say so, I would like to link from yesterday. The government is coming from a direction where it wants you protected and not harmed, it says. So, it wants to make sure extremism is not part of this government and its civil society. So, when you ask the government, can you define for us what is extremism? That is the government definition. It is, you can see, extremism is the vocal or active opposition to our fundamental values. Stop right there. If you don't know what extremism is, we don't want your children to be brought up extremists. We don't want your church to be preaching extremists. So what is it? Anything you vocalize on the pulpit, anything you do, whether a knife or a gun, violent or nonviolent, if you oppose our fundamental British values, you'll be in trouble. What are they? Then they go on including democracy, ah, oh, I have no problem with that. The rule of law, I want to be, to keep the law of God and the law of the land, no problem with that. Individual liberty, oh, yes, I want my freedom, no problem with that, let's go. Mutual respect and tolerance of different faiths and beliefs, yes. Do unto others as you'd like them do unto you, I have no problem with that. We also regard calls for the death of members of our armed forces. No, no one should do harm to our forces. They are there to protect us. So when you look at all that, you say to yourself, high and dry, I have no problem with fundamental British values. Church, you don't stop there. Keep reading. Be wise. I must be wise. If you go to the next step, then it continues. Our values are not exclusive to Britain. Yeah, you keep on saying our values. What are they? You have to go to the very bottom. They will give you a list. Religion, race, gender, disability, Sex, your orientation are one and the same. 
You can't cherry pick. In the past, they used to be in different ports. They now come under Equality Act 2010. They are in one basket. If you break one, you break all. Are we together so far? So, you see, religion, yes, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and I'm bringing my children in my home. I'm, I'm sending them to our Seventh-day Adventist school in Highland House, Stanborough Park. I, I go to church as a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, no problem with that. Are you a racist? No. How about gender? I respect male and female. How about disability? Possibly a little bit like Pastor Cavallo limping. I have no problem. Sexual orientation. Man and man are fine. Uh Uh-oh. Right there you are caught. Right there your children are caught. Because you must from the cradle told them that this is one and the same. Folk, what we are talking about is a law that your children must now be taught not only in the home, not only in the school, but in your church, Sabbath school, and pathfinders, pastors, members, listen. And in fact, the way I, th- I see this, I'm not, oh, but this is a hoax. I'm becoming to believe that if I can't deal with this, I want to deal with the Sabbath issue. Because they're one and the same. You want to deal with the Sabbath issue. God instituted two institutions in the Garden of Eden. The home, male and female, created he them in his image, and the Sabbath. Therefore, if someone can say a man and a man is fine, you don't do anything. If you can't deal with the sixth day of the week, you won't deal with the seventh day because the sixth day comes first. Oh, you didn't hear me. Ah, you can parrot Sunday law. You can cut the Pope. Those are just empty ideas. Deal with the wolf now. Could this be a preparation of what's around the corner? Let me tell you, to have two men like this is a societal trend, and it's being legalized. But what you see, church, here is God's law versus human law. Now, brethren, I have no problem with the law. Not all human laws are bad. If there is a law which says, When the red light is red, stop. When it is green, go. I accept. I don't want to do myself harm. I don't want to do others harm. Not all human laws are bad. The only problem, when the human law supersedes God's law, then say, hang on. God comes first. And as a church, if we can't deal with this now and acquiescing, pretending it's not happening, we won't deal with a real wolf down the road. I feel I can only speak for myself, possibly. Do you know, there was a time in this country Section 28 was taken away by Tony Blair and the new Labour when he came in. This country 
had section 28, which says, to a, a local authority shall not intentionally promote homosexuality or publish material with the intention of promoting homosexuality. No, no, you'll be in trouble. Promote the teaching in any maintained school of the acceptability of homosexuality as a pretended family relationship. By law, you could not even teach, oh, I'm just here pretending. You were not supposed to teach that. It was scrapped. Preparing the way for conservative to enact same-sex marriage, which is law. Folk, Judeo-Christian tradition of religious beliefs says God created man and woman to procreate. Those children in those schools, in your home, in Sabbath school, are taught you can call mommy and daddy, male and female. Those clips, which is now a modern societal trend, that booklet, I did not pluck it from the air. A Seventh-day Adventist teacher Teaching in a school, I won't tell you, not an Seventh Adventist. Pastor Cavallo, look at the syllabus of that school. I, a seventh day, must be. Te- I can't stand it. But now, if you call that thing sin, you'll be nicked. Because If you want to call Judeo-Christian tradition no more, fine. But we want to tell you there is also a new normal. That a man and a man can raise up a child, and that child can call both of them one daddy, one papa, and me. One mommy, one mama, and me. This is what your children, some of you are smiling and I want to smile, this is what your children already have in their heads without you knowing. I'm not telling, I'm asking you, I'm telling you. If you corner them, some of you, you fall down shocked. Because they are now aiming at tender minds. And what I've discovered, because sex, even the very word in Adventism is taboo. A lot of young people, you see running here, you never open your mouth as if something is wrong. So they keep it in their heart. Good morning, how are you? Back to school. Do you know what? Ah, I wish I know our education director is not listening. So I can say it. Uh, I've come to believe with the materials I've seen, we can't leave it to the school to undo what our children are being done to. That's very unfair. I think time has come, we must now be intentional. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Two, last two days, this thing was not live. It's now live. Possibly people who have been calling, where is this spot? They can listen to this. I have nothing to hide. Good thing about being retired is that you are not answerable to anyone. <laughs> oh, to God. So, I, I, so I'm ready for it. Folk, I want you to know this. 
I believe in your home, you must pray hard and long. And do what is being pumped in those children from Monday to Friday. This is the timetable. From 8 to 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, those children are out of your sight. That is the time when they are ready to absorb. They come home, they eat dinner, good night, they are in one bedroom, you are in one bedroom, the whole night you are with them, but not for them. So the cycle, the only time you have your children, you go to Sabbath, but then Sabbath school. Sunday, a few things. You, much of the time we are not with our children, not intentionally. So I'm saying, because of what is happening between Monday and, and Friday, your home, not the school, Island House School, but your home must be intentional, not to frighten children, but to pray and take biblical values seriously so that they don't hear one side of the story. When they leave your home, they go to Highland House, Stanborough Park, or whatever. The same continues. I want to speak to my fellow pastors, elders. Be now intentional. You cannot leave the school. I'm sorry. You cannot leave the home, leave the school. I believe the three trinity, the home, the school, the church, must lock homes for the children now. And be intentional. Be intentional. Not to say, oh, we are here to dismantle. No. But no. If you know what is happening, you be intentional of how you are going to nurture them. Because the moment they take off, oh, I used to do this. I used to pray. What has happened to the children? What has happened to your children under your watch? Because Pastor Cavallo is a pastor. You have not been pastoring. Where are we at? Church, I'll be going quickly. We're here. In school. This dossier. Relationships education. Relationships and sex education and health education. There was a consultation by the government. And the thing is, this, key, this thing is being brought to us not through the back door, but in our front door. There was a consultation like the one we were dealing with this week. This, was, this one was when? It was launched on the 19th. Look at the screen. Launched on the 19th of July to respond by 7th November 2018. But the report I had a hand in, because I was saying, because when they do a consultation, it is sent to a company who process, who has said what, and it's fed to the Department of Education. Do you know what? The government went, February 2019, the report I had a hand on, there were more non-Christians who accepted same-sex than Christendom in the whole of UK. Not many Christians in Britain responded in defense of any flaws that there may be. If you ask, ah, oh, so there was a consultation like that, yes. Last year, yes. It has moved on. It's, do you know where we are at now? This was a consultation last year. Now, it is a draft, a guidance. September 20, um, 2020, September, it will be mandatory. I will explain just It will be mandatory to teach that subject. Oh, 
So between now and then, no, September, there's a countdown. Se- come September, this September, trial runs will begin. Trial in your schools with your children. You and I have to be playing catch up all the time. Now, listen, we are the head and not the tail. Who was this consultation guided to? It said, if you see, head teachers, um, this particular one I showed you, who was the government targeting? Listen, head teachers, teachers, and other school staff, including governors, other educational professionals, not only teachers, but professionals, whether you are a nurse, an engineer, a doctor, respond next. Voluntary and community organizations next. Any other interested organizations and individuals next. Parents and carers next. Young people respond. But you may say, but pastor, before 2018 and now 2019, where is this coming from? Look at that statement. After looking into it, it came into the house of commons and house of lords. At the top, Justin Greening, she's normal. But at the time, she was the Secretary of State for Education and the Minister for Women's Equality. What did she say? For, as I read, follow. Look at the screen as I read, everyone, as I read. She's talking to the, of all parties, to in the House of Commons, in a written statement. I am what? Today, announcing my intention to put relationships and sex education on a statutory footing. What she means, I'm now intending to put this into law. So every child has access to age-appropriate provision in a consistent way. I'm also announcing my intention to take power. That will enable me to make PSHE, I will explain that, statutory in future. Following further departmental work and consultation. Folk, that happened. For now, by law, all primary schools in England to teach age appropriate, even then it's not being explained, age appropriate, but the right interpretation, age appropriate, is from four or five years over. They will be taught what is called relationships education. All secondary schools uh, in England to teach age-appropriate relationships and sex education. Now, if I may put it this way, in 2000, let's read back to like yesterday, in 2000, the government scrapped uh, the Section 28, brought in sex and relationships to be taught in schools. But by 2017, they now changed that not to teach sex and relationship education anymore, but to teach relationships and sex education. Okay, let's... This is how the government operates. Let me repeat. If someone could tell me, what is the difference? I will read slowly. What is the difference between sex and relationship education from relationship and sex education? Talk talk among yourselves. Talk about what is it? Okay. 
Okay, let me ask you. Let's go back to yesterday. What is the difference between a child who is out of school setting and a child who is not in school setting? Okay, let me go back to what we are talking about. Listen very carefully. Sex and relationships education from 2000 to, 12, to, 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 to uh, 2017, bang, they are now introducing relationships and sex education. You are right, the same, but slightly different in the sex in the same, in the fact that sex and relationship education was taught to the primary and secondary, everyone was taught. But because of parents who have said, mm, sex, mm, in our culture we don't, mm. all right, if that is a terrible word, we'll just swap it around. Yeah. So instead of putting sex first, that you hear it first, we'll, we'll put relationships, sex. Say, so, okay, okay. Really? Okay. What has happened? Look at this. In order to accommodate homosexuality, listen. They were becoming incensed. People were coming, becoming incensed that you could be teaching that to five-year-olds. So instead of verbalizing sex, they just said relationships. But that relationship is not only a male and a female, but it could be diverse. Every one of those children will be taught that. Primary and secondary. Relationships education. They will be taught that. But you and I know the moment they say relationships, which will include homosexuality, sex comes in. They still have you. They still have us. Um, so, you see, in 2017, 2018, changes have been made from sex and relationship education and then to relationships and uh, sex education. And they have included health folk. They have included health because, are you with me? Where they're coming from, they're not just bringing sex at the forefront. They're bringing real diverse relationships. Male, female, male, male, female, female. But go beyond that to be saying, no, we're doing some good because uh, there are sexual transmitted diseases and, uh, you know, other things, gonorrhea, we don't want our children to come that. So they are bringing almost the good and the bad in one thing. No wonder health will be included. So you'll be saying, oh, well, I think that's still good. It isn't. Now, in 2000, let me tell you, parents, are you with me? You may say, but my children have not been taught that. There may be some parents here who can say to me, oh, well, Pastor Valo, do you know something? Yes, they were teaching it in my school, but I went there and said, no, you are right. Read that statement. 2000 to 2017, you could take them to court on the point of law. Let me read it to you, possibly some of you. Exemption from sex education. You are given that opportunity. If the parent of any pupil in attendance at a maintained school requests that he may be wholly or partly excused from receiving sex education at school, 
the pupil shall accept for such um, education is comp uh, comprised in national curriculum, be excused. Now, there is a course in the national curriculum of biology. They will talk sex parts. You don't say, oh, I don't want my child. You told me want to say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a neurologist. They have to know parts of the body as a part of the national curriculum. But not one which is intended to teach them other things. Are you with me? So you would go to the school and say, no, why? Refer them. But let me tell you, folk, can I tell you something? By, of course, not now, as just like you are sitting there, I'm standing here, that has been scrapped. It, by mandate, there won't be an exemption. Either you take your child out, but from what we were learning yesterday, they find your child is not receiving suitable education, you'll be nicked. Oh, Lord, help me. Help me. Now, there is what is called PSHE. So you can see, what is statutory curriculum? This, folk, I'll go very quickly, and uh, no, let, uh, I know she wasn't expecting this. The education secretary, um, education director, please come, just come as you are. Not me, I have listened to Sister Ose. Um, she, there are sisters anyway, two brothers. Uh, sister Gina Abeque. I want you to listen. Come this way. Where is she? Yeah, come, come. I just want you to explain you know, part of the book, key, key stages and so forth. Oh, okay. you know, just, just wait, just wait. You know, when I'm speaking about Pastor Cavallo, he has had this stroke, dead and gone, and he's uh, just mouthing. Okay, I want you to hear from the, a parent. Director of Education, Headmaster, Mistress, this is her. In fact, I'm so enthused because she is an authority in what, you know, she didn't have to prepare. Tell them what they're seeing on the screen. Tell them. Morning, morning. Pastors, elders, take it or leave it, members, tell them. Okay. What Pastor Cavallo is saying is very much so. If you look at Key Stage 1, for those of us who are not in education, and if you are, bear with me. Key Stage 1 is the children from reception upwards. So you're looking at your just turned five. Okay, they've just turned five-year-old. What they're going to be studying in the curriculum would be different parts of the body, which is fair enough. We, they need to know the parts. Also about privacy, equality, and diversity in relationships. And when it comes to diversity in relationship, what the government is saying is that we should be teaching our five, six-year-olds yeah. about the different types of relationships which are acceptable in modern Britain. Yeah. So we'll be teaching our five-year-olds about homosexuality and in full details. That's what the new curriculum is saying we should be teaching them. In full, okay? including... Uh, everything. She, she's a mother. She may not mm. say everything. I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I am privy when I say fool. We have asked them where they are making these laws. Can you, can you what, what is it? They will bring, brought a condom, and this is mm. how it's going to be done. So, what mm. do you mean? We will, uh, God is my witness. Yeah. I think what Dr. Cavallo is explaining is that the government has given the mandate to a company called the Sex Education Forum. Forum. You can look them up. They're the company who are going to prepare all the planning, all the teacher resources in order to teach this. And schools which are piloting it in September 2019 will have access to these resources. If you're a teacher and they say, what's the most difficult part of the job? And the tiring part is preparing planning. So the government has organized the planning to be done for you. So it'll give you a box of thing, goodies, and you will teach accordingly. Dr. Cavallo and myself and a few of our team went to the Sex Education Forum training, and it was a real eye-opener. Stop there. 
For, let me tell you, there is no point pretending. We didn't go there willy-nilly. As a matter of fact, we didn't, I don't, I know, we camouflaged ourselves. Yes. <laughs> we didn't tell them who we were. For the whole time we were there to find out what is it? Can I submit to you? Is this whole thing is not from the Department of Education or House of Parliament. There is a machine. Mm. You will mm. never know. Seventh day Adventists, you must understand that the challenge is not between you and the government. The challenge is between the devil and God. Are oh, you not listening to me? This is the battle of the mind. Mm -hmm. The battle of the mind. God wants the, your mind for him. The devil wants your mind for him. The devil cannot come at your age. Your mind is made up. It's going to the... Mm -hmm. And, if, and this is what they've made it part of the national curriculum. This is what your children are getting every day, five days a week, which all you have is the Sabbath to try and maybe undo what they've and learned. At night when you're sleeping, but in a different bedroom. And, you know, for instance, the example is the spelling, the children's spelling. You say in this country, we teach them by saying the word, putting it into a sentence, and then repeating the word in order to learn to spell it. For the primary infants, key stage one, before they can even spell words like although and because, there are certain parts of the human body, the sexual organs that they're having to spell, which they would never even use in any form of writing. When they're writing their stories, they're not going to come across these words. But these are the words that are in the curriculum because of the fact that we have to look at sexual orientation, we have to look at all those things in the national curriculum. They want them to be able to spell those things. And in order to spell it, you need to be able to use it in a sentence, in your stories, etc. And the important part is that, as Pastor says, you cannot exempt your child from those particular lessons. Whatever they want our children to learn about relationships, They've taken it out of the sex part, which you're allowed to exempt your child from, and put it under the relationship part, which you're not allowed to exempt your child from. Yeah. So it's imperative as parents, as aunties and uncles, as members, that we get to know what's happening and how they're teaching our children at schools. Okay. okay. I think because of the importance of this, I'll stop here, but I'll continue tomorrow. The subject I intended tomorrow, I'll decide whether there is no point to just parrot words and say, tick the box.com. I've said it. People must understand. I'll stop here because our minds may be already in the coaches. <laughs> so, God bless you. We'll continue tomorrow. Wherever we are going to stop, because this is no child's play. Pastors, elders, parents, professionals, if we love the Lord and we want to communicate with the wolf. Ah, 15 more, uh, 15 more minutes, I'm told. All right, thank you. All right. Okay, I have 15 more minutes. I didn't want to be unfair. <clears throat> um. So, uh, you, you saw that, didn't you? You saw that. Uh, let's come to that, the servant of the Lord. Because as we go through, let us have the mandate. Are we reacting just because we have to? For, let me put it this way. Your standing up to this is not for self. If God has sent you, or Jesus has sent you to that wolf, he says, I'll put words in your mouth. I'll be the spokesperson. But just go there. Listen to what the servant of the Lord puts it. It is our duty, not even when, our responsibility 
LNG White Testimonies, Volume 5, page 452. It is our duty to do all in our power to avert the threatened danger. Do you think this is a danger? Yes. Church, you must do all you can to stop it. Seventh-day Adventists, if you hear the rhetoric, it's something like this. Ah, oh, no, leave it. The government will do what it is. It is a big machine. Don't waste. Prophecy said it. So as if, if you say anything, you are blocking prophecy. Thus being sheepish. Then you have another group. Instead of being, we swing the other side. Let's fight these people. You are being aggressive. Jesus is saying, even with this, we should be balanced, measured, mellowed. Do you know, wise as a serpent, there is a cobra, very wise. In fact, a cobra can size you up, you know, it can stand to your level. It does not spit willy-nilly. It has the venom. It has the venom. But it will restrain the venom. Jesus says, I want you to be wise as a serpent. I know by nature you and I are sinners like anyone else. You and I have the venom. If the government will bring a venom... I can revenge with the venom. This issue, it will be for tit for tat. Jesus says, no. I want you to represent me. Because the very people you are howling, I'm sending you to convert for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. You did not come you did not go when I told you to go. So I've created a situation to come to you. Be wise as a serpent. You can hit back, but don't. I'll put words in your mouth. Um, it is our duty to do what? We should endeavor to disarm what? Prejudice by placing ourselves in proper light before the people, we should bring before them the real question at issue, thus interposing the most effectual protest against measures to re restrict our liberty of conscience. It says, I've, I, I, folk, shall I say I'm fed up? Um, Adventist, pastor, did you see this group this way? They were, they were marching against some sex. There's people. I said, those are those people. But what are you and me doing? Pastor, those people, those three people out there. Let me tell you, Ellen G. White says here, it is our responsibility to avert threatened danger, but not that alone. We should interpose, we should intervene the most effective way to protest against the measures that take away our liberty. We should, it says, effectively protest. People are protesting in all manner of ways, taking banners and so forth. But you and I should find a way where our pro protesting will be effective. Not because we just howl. What does that mean? Can I tell you, we are protestants. Oh, some of you are, really? Yes. Seventh day Adventists are protestants. We are saying yes, but we have not been protesting to nothing. 
What have you been protesting against? This is something to protest. Because it's a measure that is taking away your liberty of your children to grow in the nature and admonition of the law. <laughs> ah, yeah. Ah, folk. Let me tell you. If you read, uh, if you read, uh, folk, just, just imagine. I'm going to read that statement. If I read you say, but nothing wrong, it's so nice, it is loaded. That is the, let me tell you now, this is the Secretary of State for Education now, not the one who started this process. So sometimes it's an illusion to be thinking of who said what then, but what is happening now. Let me read you that statement. Let me tell you whether you find any flaw in it. How subtle this thing will be. Listen. Today's children and young people are growing up in an increasingly complex world and living their lives seamlessly on and offline. Well, this presents many positive and exciting opportunities, but also challenges and risks. In this environment, children and young people need to know how to be safe and healthy and how to manage their academic, personal, and social lives in a positive way. Anything wrong with that? But read what is behind it. It's not what you're reading. Read what is behind it, because what is behind it is all what our education secretaries to live in a social, healthy life, all what you heard from Sister Gina Abiquesi is bound in that statement. Um, the government is proposing to introduce introduction of the new subject of relationships. I think she covered that very well. Let me move forward. So that has changed. In the past, Sex and relationships education. Now, it is um, uh, personal, social, health, uh, health education as they are having it. Now, so that is the timeline. I want you to see. That has been a timeline. Tw March 2017, there was an introduction of the children and social um, um, uh, work act, uh, what is happening now, if I may put it this way, it's embedded in a law already given. Uh, let me come possibly to that. Yeah, before I come to that, possibly let me explain. This is following a timeline from 2017 to 2019. There's a timeline that has been followed. The government produced a law called Children and Social Work Act. In, in that, it gave power to the Department of Education to look into this very subject of teaching uh, relationships and sex education. That's where it is coming from. It's not just been plugged from somewhere. The Department of Education has followed um, a timeline. And I said yesterday, we said, let me tell you, you know, there are some who are remainers for Brexit uh, issue. There are others who want to Brexit. But when it comes to teaching same-sex relationship, the whole country, there are remainers. No one is exiting. No, it's not an issue. You don't hear it being really, it's not a bone of contention. No wonder, to me, well, whether you are exiting or staying is another thing. But Seventh-day Adventists, you can be carried away from Brexiting from EU when the real issue, you have no idea is happening on your backyard. You and I are so engrossed with what is happening across river, um, across the Channel, English Channel, 
you have no idea what is happening across River Thames. Grass is greener. Folk, look at those two. Look at those two. Singing from the same hymn sheet in 2017, Jeremy Corbyn said, we must advance LGBT inclusion in the education system. Update the national curriculum to reflect, update the national curriculum, it must reflect lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. Theresa May opposed. We are pressing ahead with inclusive relationships and sex education in English schools, making sure that LGBT issues are taught well. Those two are remainers. Uh, that, this, I'm sorry, this was the act that was passed. I must confess I can put my hand to my heart. I saw the Children and Social Work Act. And I'm from time to time wanting to find out what is being said. When it came to this, someone alerted me. When it came to this, I said, ah, no. Where it was possibly months after I realized that was one to watch. What did it say? Look what the act said. Section 34. Education relating to relationships and, and sex. The Secretary of State must by regulations, make provision for what? Relationships, education, to be provided to pupils of compulsory school receiving primary education. B, relationships and sex education to be provided to secondary school in schools in England. So that's how it looked like. Is there any difference? Sex and Relationships Education 2000 to Relationships and as we saw it 2019, the same, only that the other one is more complex than the, the other. Relationships Education, primary school, age five to age 11 should be taught relationships, meaning husband, wife, male, female, 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 all are one and the same. From the age of 5 to 11, they must taught. Let me submit to you, my fellow pastors, elders, and members. That is not only coming to Stanborough School, Newport School. It's coming to your Sabbath School, Pathfinder, as we considered is part of educational setting, according to the British interpretation. So, that's the, now it's being given personal, social, health, and economic, as they're calling it, a very loaded word. Let me tell you, where are we at now that this has been passed? I'm concluding. What to do with English faith schools now? What about our schools? Number one, we must write a policy. Number two, pupils must take into account their their faith, but three, according to them, make LGBT content integral, or oh, what we will be doing, and I know we have to do, is that they're saying, you teach your faith, but include this. But I know people, you can work around it and negotiate with the government. You can consult and discuss with the government. Let me leave it there. Really, I was coming, that was more or less the end, where we are right now. It's already law, but it is a law between now and then. As we are writing our policies, they must reflect. We will not buy into the actual thing that we are seeing, but we can have a form of teaching that will not be biased, but one which will reflect the God that we serve. Bow our heads for prayer. Our gracious and kind, loving Heavenly Father, thank you 
for being so wonderful and kind and thoughtful to your people. Help us to wake up. Our redemption is so close to the kingdom. The devil may be waking round the clock, but the angels of the Lord are even much busier. May we be very susceptible to their presence and they use these opportunities not to fight, but to be kind and loving, but also to represent the God we serve in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.